Right, uh, hello, uh, good morning everyone. My name is Tim Evans and I work for the Archaeology Data Service. For those of you that don't know who the ADS are, we are an open access accredited digital archive for archaeological data in the UK and for UK based field workers. Um, 20 years after, because the ADS has celebrated its 20th anniversary. Many years ago, a group of very forward-thinking individuals from archaeological departments and the CBA thought that we needed an archaeology data service, so approached an organisation known as the AHDS, which was funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Board, Data Council, to set up a data centre. And at that time, we were one of five data centres alongside music, performing arts, history, history and English literature. And I was quite tempted just to give a tour de force of the, the highlights and the victories and the swashbuckling adventures of the ADS over those 20 years, because there have been many good responses to our work. These are just some anonymised comments that have been supplied to the ADS by email, uh, personal conversation or Twitter over the last 20 years. And it's always really pleasing to get that good feedback from a wide range of users, from the most loftiest academic down to somebody just researching what's in their back garden or field next door. It isn't always good feedback, however. On occasion, you get slightly mystified queries from people just treating you as a kind of random help desk about life in general. But that's fine, we're always happy to help, especially when it's my mum. Uh, sometimes the comments aren't always quite so positive. Again, these are anonymised real comments. Um, I would, again, I'm always happy to receive constructive criticism about how the ADS can get better. I do think setting up an uh, email account called IHateADS at yahoo.com and sending us that is a little bit too far, but hey ho. So, a bit more background to give you context to what I'm going to talk about. We were found in 1996 as part of the AHDS. Our first collection, which was the old Royal Commission Scotland uh, database, uh, we accessioned in 1998 as an Access 97 version uh, uh, database. Um, the first iteration of the website with an aim to provide access to this information also came out in 1998. But it hasn't always been smooth sailing. In 2008, the AHRC announced it was withdrawing funding for the whole of the HDS. So it's not just ADS, but the other four data centres as well. And although they kept up a level of core funding for the ADS as that withdrew, in the last couple of years, we now received no funding from that research council at all. In a manner of speaking, that's because we've been a success. We've managed to stand on our own two feet. And that's because we have this charging policy. The ADS charging policy can sometimes be controversial. Why are you charging for this? Well, we need skilled staff. We need IT support. We need a whole range of things, as you're about to see in the rest of the, the uh, slides here, to be a digital archive. But as well as that funding model, it's also changed into how and what we do. When we first started, our core remit as part of that HDS was AHRC funded projects. But we quickly started to take on national inventories or specialist databases, normally finds databases, uh, created by researchers. Um, but we were still very much a small organisation in terms of how we were doing it. We had one Oracle database with one schema in it where everything went, and we had two or three actual physical servers that were enshrined up on campus, and we must never touch these servers. Um, but we actually also had relatively little data. Um, I've had too much time on my hands, obviously, so I decided to actually count how much data the ADS have taken in over the years. Um, looking at this slide here, this is the uh, amount of data we've accessioned every year, and the black line is the number of accessions. An accession is the kind of somebody actually saying, hi Tim, here's an FTP uh, drop-off of a thousand TIFF files, or somebody saying, here's an email with a PDF file. It's just the mode 
of delivery of file. And as you can see, since really 2006, which coincidentally is when I joined, uh, we've taken a lot more data. Um, so last year, over 1,400 single deposits with the ADS. And that data was getting even bigger. As you can see, in 2017, we took just around three terabytes of data. And this year, even though I haven't modeled the figures, we've exceeded that already in terms of data coming to us. Why? Well, we've again diversified in what we take. As you can see back in the early days, we were taking a small number of these orange blobs here, which are what we call project archives. That might be a finds database. It could be a site archive. But then we started to take increasing number of e-prints. That's publishers who want to give us um, out of published uh, content for uh, make available on the web. And latterly, unpublished fieldwork reports deposited through Oasis, which we host on behalf of HE and HES. Um, as you can see, last year, we took over a terabyte and a half of actual PDF reports from Oasis alone, which kind of feeds into a much bigger question about why are these reports so big? What are people putting in them? Um, but that's for a whole other talk. So yes, we are getting more and more. And to support this, we have developed an ever increasingly complex system stack, if you want to call it that. From back in the day when it was just one Oracle schema and two servers, we now have, and myself and a colleague uh, confirmed this, 32 virtual machines running a large array of various server softwares or implementations, uh, three types of database on top of it. We need machines to do specific things and to support specific applications that we're running either for ourselves or for our partners, for example, our sister organization, Internet Archaeology. As well as this, we have a commitment to getting our metadata out to our partners or uh, people that have a vested interest in the data. So we need to build web services, provide web mapping services, or even OAI PMH targets to people like the Heritage Gateway, Ariadne Data Portal, which Julian Richards spoke about yesterday, or indeed the Marine Environment Data Information Network. This is our duty. This is what we have to support. Some of you will have seen this slide before. This is OAIS, not to get confused with OASIS, which is the kind of lingua franca of digital preservation. Everyone loves this slide. Any digital archive worthy of the name, or indeed physical archive, will follow this conceptual model. And we've always been quite proud of being able to map roles and responsibilities to this model. So for example here, you've got Julian, our director, Donna Page, our administrator, the most important person at the ADS because she makes everything, everyone gets paid. Um, Paul Young, who's uh, responsible really for maintaining that system stack, but also people like uh, Katie Green, who's responsible for going out and advocating for the ADS and getting data in and then modestly a massive picture of me in the middle doing all sorts. But it takes people to run this organisation. It doesn't run by itself. And aside from that, there's also the kind of evolution of what we do in the environment in which we sit. For a long time, ADS have been forerunners of digital preservation, not just in the heritage landscape, but also wider as well. When those people set up the ADS back in 1996, they were well ahead of the curve, and I can say that, because Julian's not here. But it was really quite amazing that people were thinking about this. So for a long time, we've kind of, uh, as part of International Consortium, led on what digital preservation is, the standards we should use. Uh, we've been peer reviewers of uh, standards reports, and the only people in the UK doing digital archiving for archaeology. This is changing, however. Uh, we now have national bodies such as the British Library or National Archives and UKDA um, doing digital preservation on an industrial scale. When I went to the British Library and said, oh, I've got over 20 terabytes of data, they laughed because they take six terabytes a day. <laughs> um, but they're developing 
broad but also very nuanced strategies to deal with digital preservation. We also have the rise of institutional repositories, and then we have the national heritage bodies such as HES that are now doing digital archiving for their respective areas. And also the concepts of what it is to do digital archiving are constantly being pushed forward. On that note, national heritage bodies we can end optimistically. This is a photo of the launch of the kind of Bedern working group um, with representatives for Royal Commission Wales, HES, HE and ourselves under the auspices of the Digital Preservation Coalition um, with this commitment to uh, work together for maintaining standards and approaches to digital preservation across the United Kingdom. And I can't emphasise that enough, it's all about working together. And just at the moment, I think we're all pooling our respective brains into standards for metadata for the archiving of 3D data. The idea is that wherever you are in the UK, you will be adhering to the same standards that we all want you to use. Unfortunately, this beautiful picture is ruined by this gurney <laughs> book in the background, which I apologise for. I was actually trying to get out of the way. So that's the Bedroom Group. But just to go back quickly, how do we actually do digital archiving now? <coughs> well, just to focus on one aspect of the remainder of the talk, which is data management. As I said, we currently have over two and a half million files, 300 unique formats and over 20 terabytes, and that's growing at least three terabytes a year. And we have these problems at the ADS. How do we know what we have? Um, how do we associate metadata with the files? What if we've got content in different files that is fundamentally part of the same entity? All these kind of, trying to think a bit more advanced here. And for years we've struggled internally in trying to manage this. In the old days, all we had was just lists of files and writing uh, command line tools to produce these lists and then hand upload them to a database. Uh, that failed with my persistent uh, spelling mistakes, especially in comma separated values, which led to that being abandoned. Um, we then looked at a system called Fedora, uh, which is an off the shelf solution for maintaining your files but also giving it a URI. So we tried to build that on top of our existing database. It was very complicated. In fact, it was too complicated for us to merge with an existing system. So that was a very literal rage quit in that case. So like all good archaeologists, we built our own uh, database. Um, we have been working towards this concept of an object, so in this case a shapefile, is compi comprised of those four bits that the depositor gave us. Um, but then the object also exists as GML, Geography Markup Language there, which we actually prefer for preservation. And then we've also got everything bundled together for a zip, which we put on the website. But that's the same object. It's all the same thing existing in three places. And this follows an international standard known as PREMIS, which uh, is similar to PSYDOC, similar as in it can be impenetrable, but once you get under the hood, it's strangely addictive, um, which kind of follows this object, event, agent uh, approach. <coughs> I'll just skip through this one because I'm running out of time. But here, for example, in the language of PREMIS, we can have, say, a raw image somebody gives us there, we can record all the different things we do on it before it even reaches an ADS server. We might want to convert a JPEG, for example, to a TIFF, that's a normalization, in which case we need to know who did it, what they were using. And if we then later migrate, JPEG 2000, for example, we'd record that. But then we're also recording the relationships between the files. In this case, if you want to know what that image is, you need to see this metadata file but also it contributes to a much larger 3D model. That is premise in a nutshell. And that is something we're now integrating now as a matter of course. And it's really exciting. Some people think that's too much work. Why are you doing this? Well, it's an international standard. If we want to continue to provide a good service to archaeology, we have to reach for these standards. It also offers a fascinating opportunity to get beyond the limitations of the ADS website. 
I know the limitations of the ADS website better than anyone, I can assure you. Information is there, but it's often siloed within the individual collections. Although we have introduced this fasted classification, and it is very powerful, quite easily you can go down but not find something because the metadata just isn't there to start with. Uh, I'll show you a quick example here. This is a kind of bog standard archaeological site from now we get in from commercial archaeology. In this case, the unit have done everything correctly. Uh, they've given us all the files we want, they've given us the metadata, and they've also given us some fantastic collection level metadata. But this is all about the collection. Underneath that archive, you could well have thousands and thousands of files, but effectively, the, the, the little fine granular bits of metadata are still masked, and you actually have to go looking through all these files. By extending our database to take all the metadata that's being compiled by our users and going into the database, we then have this granular metadata. And to show you just an example here, we now have independent utility of the object. So in this case, this is just a mock-up we've done. This is the actual te some technical metadata, but here's all the metadata that goes with that image. Now, what that allows us to do in the future is to take the files out, take objects out of the archive and expose them on their own two feet, if that makes sense. So rather than just searching for the collection, you could potentially cross-search the ADS across all three and a half, two and a half, sorry, million files of the metadata that goes with that particular file. So if you wanted to search for all the images we have of Africa or all the CAD files relating to Roman excavations from the southwest of England, for example, that metadata is now there, potentially exposing and allowing people to reuse it and now, of course, exposing it to our project partners. That's the future. It's been a long way getting there, and it does all end with a big database. But I think that's the point. We need to persevere to record this metadata as accurately and consistently and get people using it. It's no point compiling two and a half million files if people aren't using them. Uh, that's me. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I can be reached on these if you want to know what the TIFF file is or be particularly upset with the ADS, uh, let us know. Uh, do follow the ADS blogs as well. I, I try to keep them up to date with what we're doing and that's us on Twitter. Thank you very much for your attention.